this is way more than just a cardiac catheterization suite. This is a comprehensive cardiovascular unit. They can get the best available treatment in this country right where they are living. It's not only a state-of-the-art cath lab, it's going to be an all-inclusive comprehensive cath lab. This is just one other component where we're taking our services to another level. Finally, we come to Broward Health Imperial Point on North Federal Highway in Fort Lauderdale. Four months ago, my fiancé has been in pain with his right side, waking up every day feeling nauseous and even constant nausea. He has been having trouble eating and losing an extreme amount of weight. Our third time there tonight due to now noticing a mass in his left abdomen. The second time we went there, did a CT scan and started pancreas levels were up stated pancreas levels were up as of tonight got no answers we felt like they didn't even want us there rushing us out they did an x-ray and the doctor came back said they didn't find anything says see a gi doctor said yep didn't even look my, my fiance in the eye also didn't seem to care about the amount of weight loss i'm severely disappointed 10 months ago my husband is now home and 65 pounds lighter. The hospital stay was horrible. Between the doctors on the case and the hospital incompetence, they almost killed my husband. He went to the hospital ER for internal bleeding and pain in his groin area. He had an internal bleed 15 years ago that he almost died from. Um, the ER might be good at Imperial Point, but the charge nurse on the fifth floor doesn't have a clue how to do her job and case management office is a joke. Most of the nurses and other staff, including cafeteria workers, are unhappy. Thought Holy Cross had gone downhill in the last 20 years after they bought out after they got bought out by Trinity. Imperial Point is state run and I have never seen such incompetence like that in my life. They ran up his hospital stay which wasn't necessary. They stuck a dr second drain tube in him that was not necessary. The doctor tore his intestine and put a hole in his colon which the doctor admitted openly. I do appreciate the doctor's honesty in the matter, and at least they told my husband and I what happened. But case management and the cha charge nurse purposely held up some sending info to home health so my husband could be discharged before the holiday in order for the hospital to gain more money and revenue for extra days until home health could be approved. The ER did not run the appropriate test for internal bleeding when he came into the hospital. They mislabeled it as hemorrhoids when it was actually internal bleeding. Imperial Point has a nurse running administration. The hospital is a joke. 11 months ago, I arrived at the ER via rescue and was there about five to six hours on October 10th, and I left traumatized. I thought I was having a heart attack as well as having severe back pain for about two to three weeks. I was told I was to be given two bags of saline for fluids as well as a medicine to help with nausea because they also wanted to give me morphine for the pain, and morphine causes nausea. Halfway through the first two bags, we went to do a CT scan, which hurt very much because of the pain and I've been having in my back. When I returned to the spot in the hallway I was stationed to, I was never hooked up to complete the bags of saline. I was never told I was given morphine and was in pain and discomfort my entire time in the ER. However, after shift change, the nurses were under the impression I was given morphine at 6.45 p.m. My father, my mother, father, and girlfriend were there with me, and we all don't believe I was given morphine, but it was logged that I did. I alerted the nurses that this was the case. Also showed them that the half-empty bag's next to me. Uh, however, it was logged that I did receive it, but I was still in pain and discomfort. I asked to speak with the doctor. When the doctor came to me, he explained that he thought I had bad strain in my a bad strain in my back, but was very dismissive when I asked about my high blood pressure and heart rate and replied, so now you have high blood pressure? Mind you, I thought I was having a heart attack a few hours ago. During this conversation, a very loud person was brought in the ER by the police and the doctor walked away from me and said, I'll talk to you later and literally walked away from me while I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on with me and what all the tests showed. I never saw him again or spoke with him after this. About 30 minutes to an hour later, I was dismissed with a prescription for lidocaine patches. It was one of the worst traumatic days of my life, and I, the level of care or lack thereof has traumatized me even more, and I will never be back to seek care from this hospital. After having a bad experience with Fort Lauderdale Behavioral Health, I brought my mother to Imperial Point and they actually managed to be the absolute worst place to bring someone with a mental illness. Super unprofessional and medical malpractice slash medical neglect is going on at this facility. They do not care for their patients at all. There is no correspondence, no following up, no checking in, not even discharge documentation or steps for the patient for life after treatment. And I guess that is because they don't even give some kind of treatment to their patients. They do not let you know what is going on or answer any of my phone calls. 
When I try to get something resolved in regarding a patient, my own mother, they just throw blame at each other. Not only do they not take their mental health patients seriously, but they also discharge their patients before they are ready and just abandon them patients anywhere. The first time they discharged my mother, they just dropped her off at the front door without any keys or phone. I went to her house to check on her and she was missing. The second time that they discharged her, they didn't even call me, even though they have in past and I am the emergency contact, nor did they call any family members to let us know she was discharged. One of the social workers, Shannon, is the only person I was able to talk to this whole time and she was extremely rude, lied, and did not help my mother like she and the others at the facility were supposed to. This place is disgusting, they don't even deserve one star, and they will be served for their crimes because this cannot be okay or legal. Ten months ago. Horrible. Very hard to get reports about your loved one. No one seems to know what's going on. One nurse commented on my mother's IV stick not looking good and left the room and didn't come back. The shift nurse came an hour later, walked into the room, and told us she still has to receive her shift change report. Mind you, this was 8 p.m., and the shift change is at 7 p.m. In other facilities, the social worker usually called. At this facility, I have called the social worker twice and keep getting a voicemail on what sounds like a very antiquated phone. I'm simply trying to find out my mother's treatment plan. When I visit in person or call, my mother's nurse seems to never be available. No one should have to wonder if their elderly mother is safe in a medical facility. Three months ago, just realized I had never posted my review on Google. Going back to summer of 2020 at the start of COVID, I had went to the ER for intense stomach pain. Without testing me for any other illnesses or giving pain medication, at least they told me that I must get a COVID test, to which I refused only because I had been prone to stomach virus and had a traumatic event as a child with swabbing in my nostril. Might I add in the room beside me, nurses and doctors were constraining a man who clearly did not want to be tested. Instead, the nurses and doctors yelled, lay down and stop moving. Long story short, the Dr. Delgado told me, you know you're going to kill everyone around you, and with that being said, I was discharged with only having blood work taken, no IV, and was told to take Tylenol. Thank God for Broward North, who took time to analyze my pain and give me pain meds for the stomach pain. Stomach pain was not a symptom of COVID at this time, hence why it was difficult to rule it if it was COVID or not. I was indeed COVID positive, and my whole family was as well. And glory to God, no doctor, I did not die nor did my family. Haven't been to Imperial Point since and never will. A year ago. I would not send my worst enemy here. The ambulance took my wife here as it was the closest. We are new to this area. She fell and had fractured tailbone and only performed a CT scan and when they were there and when there was nerve damage also. They only treated her for pain for fourteen days, then sent her to a nursing home, which I checked her out the same night. I took her to a spinal specialist and they could not believe they did not perform an MRI and actually treat her. I later found out that the doctor who treated her was not a fully qualified doctor. The specialist sent us immediately to the ER at another hospital, which she currently is getting good professional treatment and will require surgery. I'm currently investigating a lawsuit. Please check out the current lawsuits against this hospital. I also agree with the prior posts about they are very rude. Once you check posts, you cannot talk to the attending doctor. They informed me on two occasions that once a patient is checked out, they have no further contact. Screw them. A year ago. Staff is completely overworked. The nurses are expected to do everything. Management is focused on what looks good on paper. Nursing assistants are few in number on the floors in order to save money. This hospital needs more nursing assistants so that nurses can do their jobs. They should cut their management staff and put that money towards nursing assistants. The reason the patients are not satisfied is because the people who actually take care of them are being overwhelmed by the demands management is putting on them. A year ago. It was my second time admitted to Imperial Point this year. First time, not so bad. Second, nurse staff was clueless on most things. I had a doctor who sent his BA to tell me I was having surgery and never even saw or heard of the doctor. I waited numerous times over a half hour after I hit the call light. Then the nurse in charge number they have on your room board, they rarely answered. Even my doctor said, don't go there anymore. Imperial Point is a small community hospital. Most of us have been here a long time. Some employees at Imperial Point have been here since the day Imperial Point opened its doors. Imperial Point is very strong in same-day surgery. We are also very strong through our interventional lab in radiology. We have a new team that has just arrived at Imperial Point. Um, they have a tremendous amount of experience and they bring all new types of procedures to the hospital that we've never performed before. 
I've been at this hospital for 15 years. What sets us apart is the customer service we provide, patient satisfaction and patient safety, positive patient outcome, and it's evidence when patients come back to me and said how satisfied they are with the care, and they are more than happy to come back for care if needed. Two years ago, patient beware, good doctors, they sewed me up and took good care of me. This is where you need to be cautious. Upon dismissal from my visit, I was told to come back to Imperial Point to have my stitches removed. I asked at that moment, do I need to come back to ER for this? Will I be charged again $150 for the visit? I was told I would not be, it would not be charged as it was a follow-up to have the stitches removed. Well, they charged me to sit at the administration desk and have a worker who was working the desk remove them for me. Fast forward a few months and I have a collection agency chasing me after no contact from the hospital nor anything in the mail. How did they run their business over there? I disputed the charge and was told that the administrators rebuked only to go to ER for emergency purposes, but that is a direct conflict of what was communicated to me. I was there and certain of what I was told, but some coward hiding behind customer service makes a decision based on our policy versus what was communicated to the patient. Just know that you may be dealing with what you may be dealing with before you go give them your business. Sorry, you've lost a customer who used to speak highly of your company a year ago. This has to be by far the worst hospital in Broward County. When City ER two weeks ago uh, for a swollen ankle, very painful, they told me I had gout. After a week, it was getting worse, so I went back to the ER. This time, they told me I had an infection and prescribed antibiotics. Four days later, wasn't getting any better. I decided to go to Cleveland Clinic. First thing in Cleveland Clinic did, they did an EKG, they did an echocardiogram and found out that I had congested heart failure, had nothing to do with gout, had nothing to do with an infection. Imperial Point never took a chest test rate, never took an EKG, my oxygen saturation was 88, they didn't even give me oxygen. Definitely going to file a lawsuit a year ago. If you want alert, caring, and dutiful staff members, then go somewhere else. This hospital is filled with old employees who only work there because they get free health care. Maybe they were skilled back in the day, but now they just don't care. A year ago. Dr. Delgado came in my room for literally 45 seconds and left me here while I'm in severe pain. I called to the nursing station and couldn't hear what the nurse was saying. I tried contacting the nurse again. She responded, he's busy. Stop calling. I thought I heard her wrong, but I didn't. She repeated, he's busy. Stop calling. The care nurse was lovely, but it seemed like she was scared to speak to anyone about helping me. Two years ago. If I could give this place a negative five stars, I would. As a physician, I've worked in a handful of different care settings, and I will say this place is by far the worst with regards to a value of care and value for the patient. My brother was hospitalized as an inpatient for seven days, where we, his family, came daily during his allotted visitation time to see him. Numerous times I called to speak to a physician regarding his length of stay and why he was not being discharged. Each time I was directed to a nurse who fortunately didn't know any of the medical who unfortunately didn't know any of the medical reasons, diagnosis, or basically care at all for my brother. In the seven days my brother was here, his family was ne never once called to be updated by a nurse or physician. We had one three minute phone call with a case manager to verify that he lived with us and that was the only hospital initiated conversation. To add to the spectacle, my brother was never fully sure who his doctor was, who was coming in to see him, or even at what time. Multiple times I would call it 1500 or 1600 and the nurse would tell me that my brother was yet to be seen by a physician that there were no updates. By the time I was able to call back later in the evening, the night shift nurse had come in and knew even less of what was going on with my brother's condition. It's an unfortunate happenstance that the medical field be disgraced with the level of care this place demonstrated towards my brother. The physicians, medical staff, and management should be ashamed. As a medical professional and doctor, I would stay as far away from this institution as possible. A year ago, I came into the emergency room with severe pain in my stomach. I have a huge ovarian cyst on my ovaries and very bad endometriosis. Dr. Silverman was just discharging people and not caring about the patients. I told him how much pain I'm in and he just gave me some medicine and sent me on my way and told me to, to go to a different hospital that they don't have an, any OBGYN. I couldn't believe it. You just send a patient away when I'm in so much pain. He knows I need surgery. He even said it, but sent me away like I was nothing. I'm going to sue the hospital for this. <laughs> Two years ago. This post isn't for me, but for my ex-husband. The level of service here is absolutely disgraceful. My ex-husband came in last night with a bad stomach pain. The doctor had, that admitted him did so with a diagnosis of possible pancreatitis. Nonetheless, the pain is getting worse. My ex-husband is released after he had been given three shots of Dilaudid. I picked him up, but he is still in pain with the painkillers wore off, so another trip to the ER. After we have 
We have been waiting two hours in a storage closet practically with other medical personnel coming in without the simplest excuse me or just need to step in here real quick. Something. No, they just walk right in, rummage through the drawers, take what they need and walk right out, all without acknowledging us in the room. When asked what are, are they doing, they actively ignored us. Finally, my ex-husband notices the door, Silverman MD. The doctor, Silverman MD, that diagnosed him last night, he is baffled that the floor doctor, Homie MD, treated my ex-husband for sleep apnea. Are you serious? Now that we have been sitting here for almost four hours, we have the medical staff come in and start rummaging through the doors again. At least one of the personnel acknowledges us, but still was treated rudely. We still haven't even seen... We still haven't seen the doctor... We've had nurses come in and give us a whole bunch of lies, and my ex-husband is still in pain. Piss poor treatment. We don't know what's going on. A year ago. This hospital basically hires great value nurses and doctors. They put my friend in a coma and gave her medicine that wasn't good for her. Also, they refuse to clean you up if you soil yourself. These nurses and doctors who took an oath to save people's lives are just capping for the internet. Please, Broward, fire all your staff and replace them with people who know how to do their job. Two years ago, my father checked in for COVID treatment. He was having severe pack pain where his lungs were located. To the point he couldn't sit down, he had to lay down. Protocol is to have them check in separately in a different room and wait. He checked in at 9 p.m. and was not seen until 3 a.m. He asked for water since the vending machine was not working to purchase. They told him no. He asked several other times because he was super dehydrated, was still told no. He was so dehydrated that he drank water from the sink of the bathroom several times. He also asked if he could have a blanket since he was having cold chills again denied. He asked how long he, until he would be seen, till he would be since three hours had already passed and still nothing. The pain in his body was so bad that he laid on the floor. That was the only way to elevate the pain. They came and yelled at him. He couldn't lay on the, on the floor, understanding the floors are filthy since they never clean. But that's besides the point. He waited for six hours dehydrated and in pain to be seen for 30 minutes and sent home to get medication from pharmacy. My father is still in pain and having a horrible cough. I am checking him into another hospital. He has had COVID for a week with same symptoms and nothing is getting better. Shame on you guys for treating patients this way. A year ago, got into a car accident, came to Imperial Point Hospital, told them about it, and now I have a pacemaker and my chest hurts, so I want to get it checked out. Two hours later, this lady walks in also with a pacemaker and they took her in first because they are... The front desk lady's words, well, she's more important. No, not okay at all. Two years ago, this hospital was the worst. Unfortunately, I lost my husband here, and it was due to their unprofessional and not knowing what they were doing. I do not recommend this hospital to anyone. The doctors were awful. No callbacks, no updates, no treatment plan. Even tried calling the chief nurse officer, and she never returned my call back. Dr. Carrillo, Dr. Torres, Dr. Nabrizi all know what they did. Stay away from this horrible hospital. Please, if you're reading this, go to another hospital where they have doctors who care about their patients and have a treatment plan. I truly believe they killed him. They did a procedure on him that made him bleed out, and the doctors knew his body wasn't strong enough for it. This hospital is terrible and evil doctors. Have you ever been to a hospital where a doctor fires himself from the case? Something shady was going on. Two years ago. Honestly, this hospital needs new workers ASAP. At this point, I'm disappointed. I lost two family members to one hospital because they couldn't think fast enough. This hospital sucks. Communication sucks. If you're sick and fighting for your life, just go to Broward General. Don't bother to waste your time. A year ago. Terrible. Do not go. Rude doctor, rude nurse, yelled at patient for not going to regular doctor who had dropped her insurance. A year ago. Worst possible care you can receive. I could write a book about my experience. I will be going to corporate compliance on this. All right. In closing, uh, this episode of Hospital Hell, Healthcare Nightmares featuring Fort Lauderdale, Broward County's worst rated hospitals has provided a glimpse into the challenges faced by patients within Broward County's healthcare system. The one-star reviews we've explored shed light on areas in need of improvement, sparking essential conversations about the quality of care and patient experiences. As we wrap up this broadcast, we encourage further discussion and action to enhance health care services in Broward County. By addressing the concerns raised by patients and their families, we can w work towards a more effective and compassionate health care system. Thank you for joining us in this crucial exploration, and we hope it serves as a catalyst for positive change in Broward County's health care landscape. Broward Health Imperial Point is a 204-bed hospital in Fort Lauderdale, providing high-quality, compassionate care to the community through a wide range of treatments and services. The 24-7 Emergency Department at Broward Health Imperial Point 
features a dedicated unit for the quick treatment of minor injuries and illnesses, and private suites to care for more comprehensive cases. Senior-friendly suites are available, providing wider beds with pressure-relieving mattresses and seating for caregivers to make for a more comfortable experience. The department is also a certified primary stroke and heart failure center with direct access to a specialized stroke team. Emergency behavioral health assessments and crisis intervention begin in the hospital's emergency department, a Baker Act receiving unit. In the inpatient behavioral health center, a multidisciplinary team of caregivers works together in the treatment and stabilization of emotional disorders through counseling, medications, and therapeutic activities. The Joint Replacement Center at Broward Health Imperial Point specializes in advanced joint replacement surgical options, including hip and total knee replacement. The center also offers private suites, educational resources, and integrated physical therapy to help get you back to your life. Broward Health Imperial Point has a level one adult cardiovascular service program, providing a comprehensive approach to the prevention, detection, and treatment of heart disease. Cardiac services include diagnostic cardiac catheterization and percutaneous coronary interventions, led by a multidisciplinary team of cardiac specialists who can quickly create a personalized care plan for patients. Interventional cardiologists are also available to address blockages in the coronary arteries with minimally invasive non-surgical procedures to restore blood flow to the heart. The Center for Wound Care and Hyperbaric Medicine has two hyperbaric oxygen chambers designed to treat non-healing wounds. While receiving treatment, patients can relax and watch a movie and receive care from board-certified wound care physicians and specially trained nurses and technicians. Broward Health Imperial Point offers minimally invasive robotic-assisted surgical options for a wide range of specialties, including general surgery, gynecology, urology, and more. The advanced technology is designed to provide specially trained surgeons with greater precision, flexibility, and control during complex and delicate procedures. Patients may experience a variety of benefits when compared with open surgery, including smaller incisions, less pain and scarring, and shorter recovery time. When looking for high-quality, compassionate care, you can depend on Broward Health Imperial Point.